you're scouring the internet looking up all the videos everyone from dominic barbado to quick play to jaime abanez and you're wondering how can i start with less than a hundred dollars i'm new to the business i don't have a lot of money to risk well this video is specifically for you so if you're interested you only have a hundred dollars and that's your budget stay tuned to the end of this video because i'm going to break down kind of some ways you could jump into this business and kind of make it easier on your financial budget this is going to be a series we're going to go from a hundred dollars to five hundred to a thousand to two thousand all the way up to ten thousand so depending on your budget stay tuned on this channel over the coming weeks as we dive into each type of budget that exists to start your very own vending machine business but what is up guys my name is dominic barbado but you already know that because it says it below this video in this video we're breaking down what it takes and how far you can go with just a hundred dollars so there's really only three options for anyone who's just beginning the vending business and only has a hundred dollars one simply is go borrow some money from someone else so that you could start with a little more money hundred dollars is fine i started with 450 dollars almost seven and a half years ago at this point so a small budget does work in the vending machine industry because there are so many avenues in which you can start as well i'll pivot into the kind of second thing which is gumball machines toy machines you can't really see this toy machine up here but machines like that can range between kind of 50 and 250 dollars depending where you buy them if you get a good used deal facebook marketplace craigslist offer up all these type of places where there's secondhand markets for machines you can get a machine used and go from there clean it up set it up make sure that it works for toys or candy depending on how you want to vend out i will address the market of candy right now not from a full line standpoint like the bars of snickers or twix but from the standpoint of bulk candy like m m's skittles peanut m m's jelly beans starburst the cost of these candies have went up astronomically given from seven years ago when i started this business the cost was a lot cheaper and you could vend out eight nine peanuts and still make a healthy margin but nowadays if you're vending out eight to ten peanuts out of your bulk candy machine for a quarter you're probably close to losing money just based on the gas, your time, the cost of the machine, depreciation, all of these things. I think it's really important to kind of consider switching to 50 cent mechanisms when vending candy or like I have done, kind of getting away from candy for most accounts and going strictly to toys. Toys have a healthier margin. So I think that's a little more important. When you have toys in your vending machines, you can sell them anywhere from 50 cents to a dollar with a nicer healthy profit margin, which is important in this business. And I know this video is about a budget restriction, but I do want to just address the entire scheme of this business and profit margins. Because at the end of the day, if you invest $100 into this business, and you say Dominic told you to do it and then you don't make any money because your profit is low, then I'm gonna think you're gonna blame me. So I wanna make sure I address the concerns there because if you wanna start with just candy machines and you wanna do M&Ms or Skittles and stuff like that, highly suggest really pushing for that 50 cent mechanism or switching to some newer machines that are out there like electric bulk vendors and such. A lot of hot, trendy machines coming to this industry as you guys have seen probably if you do follow the industry in detail also join the facebook page vending revolution we talk all about vending and everyone in the vending business is in that facebook group so super important if you want to be in the industry and kind of have the ins and outs of how people operate this business i think that's a good place to start i really think if you're going to start with a hundred dollars start with a used machine start with a used gumball machine a used toy machine any sort of machine that you can find for a good deal you know filter marketplace filter craigslist filter offer up make deals with people try to get your first machine out there i think the biggest thing when you only have a hundred dollars is not to delay the process of starting like i did you know i started with 450 dollars I had that money from another business venture that I was doing fixing iPhones when I was younger. So I just jumped right into it. I had 12 machines and you know, it wasn't the easiest thing to place them, but eventually after trying and trying and trying, I got some locations and was able to get those machines out. So I think it's important if you are gonna buy a machine, don't just jump right in and say, okay, I'm just gonna buy it, whatever. No, know that you have the discipline to get out there and find a location. I have so many people commenting on my videos. Oh, I can't get a location. Oh, I can't do this. Millions of people have started a vending business in this country. Millions of people are getting locations, you know, and maybe it's not millions, but lots of people are out there getting locations. So why can't you? And I think that's the most important thing. And more videos on that soon. I have another video series that I wanna create, leaning towards the video series, cause I think there's a lot more you can learn from a series rather than just one video talking about something. Like this video is about a hundred dollar budget, but the next video being about a $500 budget, it'll be a completely different topic 
because $500 gives you a lot more leeway on what you can do in this industry. So really summing it up, you know, if you're gonna start, those are kind of the two ways, either borrow more money from someone so you could start in the full line vending business, which I don't recommend starting there, or start with toy machines and candy machines, buy used online. And then the third, I highly suggest this to everyone because I didn't know about this business when I started. If I knew about this when I started, I would have been a lot more successful within this industry just because I would have learned the sales process of vending. The biggest thing of vending that keeps people from success is not knowing how to sell something. If you can't sell, if you can't market, if you can't get your name out there within your community to people that you know have businesses that will allow you to place machines, you're kind of doomed for failure. And I think that's a very important thing to kind of make sense because this industry isn't like other industries because we are in a lead generation business, but we're also in the physical asset business where we have to place valuable machines in people's locations and hope that they turn a profit. And most of the time when you're just starting, it's very hard to find those really good accounts where you're gonna make the most amount of money. So I always try to recommend to people that you have to really just adjust your time frame and just understand that this is a long game and know how much money you want to make and just work backwards from that goal. Highly recommend getting my book, Vending Revolution. Within that book, I discuss all of these things, give you the right mindset tools and stuff like that as well. New book coming soon, Vending Locating Secrets. So if locating isn't for you, that book is going to drop the end of the summer. And I'm really excited to get that in the hands of everyone who's having a hard time locating because that book really breaks down everything for you from A to Z on how to locate vending machines from every type from every state in the country the last thing that i highly suggest are drum roll these bad boys these are honor boxes and so many people think like oh what the heck are these people just steal what are you doing with those what's the purpose of them well in this video i'm going to kind of explain them in the best detail that i can because these things if i had them when i started I could have started with a hundred of these boxes, had a hundred locations, and from those hundred locations, been able to develop my business into a really strong foundation of toy and gumball machines from the simplest foundation, because these are cardboard, sure, call it a cardboard vending machine. I find that to be the easiest thing to say. You fill them with about seven and a half dollars worth of lollipops. People pay 50 cents for one or a dollar for two. They donate here. You zip tie the bottom so no one can kind of get your money out. It's actually really hard if someone was to try to steal your money, it doesn't open because if you zip tie the bottom, people just don't steal from these things. And that's just the truth of it. Depending on where you are, if you're in a major city, I highly don't recommend these. I do have people in cities that use them and say they're fine. But again, it really depends on your city and your area and just know where you live. But people love these, these specifically, don't work with the charity. You can put a charity label here, but you also can place the boxes like this, offer them for free, put your branding, say, hey, free vending machines, whatever you want. And then you have a sticker on the back that essentially says, you know, call if it's out of stock. Now we'll go over to these. So this is a charity box, a little different than the white box. These boxes specifically work on a donation basis. So you have to donate to charity, especially a cancer charity, and kind of go into location saying, hey, we donated X amount of dollars. We place these in businesses to raise money for charity. We also make a profit while doing it because we have to pay for the lollipops, our expenses and our gas. Is this something you wanna do? And that's really it. These boxes are simple. You place them down on the counter like such and people will put in 50 cents or a dollar. And when they're completely sold out, they have anywhere between 28 to $38 and your profit is somewhere in the 200% margin range. So there's a lot of room for you to be able to donate to a good cause while also building your vending machine business for yourself, which I think is such an important thing because you could have 50 of these for $500 and instead of 50 vending machines, which would cost you $5,000 or $50,000, depending on the type of vending machines you wanna start with. So if you're interested in honor boxes, link down below to Vending Business Solutions. We just updated the website, so a lot easier to kind of navigate on there. Yeah, I just truly believe these are kind of the three ways when you have a low budget, this is how you have to start because there's really no other way. And if you made it to the end of the video, good for you, comment down below what your budget is. And depending on the comments from this video, I'll add some more stuff into the videos that you guys wanna see and hear from me growing a six figure plus net vending business over the last seven and a half years. So I think it's really important to kind of learn from others in this industry and learn from my mistakes and learn from, you know, the things that I did wrong and the things that I did right so that you could do it better. Make sure you subscribe, like this video, comment down below. See you guys in the next video.